Hey everyone, welcome to Tithology. Today we're going to discuss the latest update on how to diagnose periodontitis. Our aim is to simplify and dissect the famous table we've all been seeing recently uploaded by the AAP, which is the American Academy of Periodontology, in order to be able to apply our knowledge to solve exam questions. Before we begin, we must first go over the revised definition of a periodontitis case. A periodontitis is usually defined as is interdental cal is detectable at more than or equal to two non-adjacent teeth, or buccal or oral cal more than or equal to three millimeters with pocketing of more than three millimeters is detectable at more than or equal to two teeth. A more practical approach is a patient will be diagnosed as a periodontitis patient if these three factors were present. The pocket depth was greater than or equivalent to 4, with bleeding on probing that occurred due to the clinical attachment loss. And these factors should be detectable at two or more non-adjacent teeth. If the affected teeth were adjacent to each other, cal would most probably be due to a local factor. Moreover, to call this periodontitis, cal should not be the result of gingival recession caused by trauma, like brushing for example, dental caries extending in the cervical area of the tooth, the presence of cal on the distal aspect of a second molar and associated with malt position or extraction of a third molar, an endodontic lesion draining through the marginal periodontium, and the occurrence of a vertical root fracture. So in short, clinical attachment loss should merely be due to periodontitis. Now moving on to staging, in this table on top we have periodontitis that could be stage 1 which is manifested as early stages of attachment loss, stage 2 that has progressed to established periodontitis, stage 3 which will be severe periodontitis with the potential for additional tooth loss, and stage 4 which is severe or advanced periodontitis with extensive tooth loss and the potential for the complete loss of dentition, which might translate to a loss of masticatory function in the future. On the right hand side, we have severity and complexity that will guide us to the stage. An extent and distribution below it will determine if periodontitis is localized, generalized, or has a molar incisor pattern. Let's start with severity. Severity is a reflection of the clinical presentation. What you see in the clinic is what is recorded in the chart. In severity, we have three factors, interdental cal, radiographic bone loss, and tooth loss that will affect both the stage and inevitably determine if periodontitis is mild, moderate, or severe. To begin with, stage 1 is initial or mild periodontitis, stage 2 is moderate, and stage 3 and 4 will be severe periodontitis. Starting off with interdental clinical attachment loss, here, if we're presented with a case, the site with the greatest amount of cal, that is the worst affected tooth, will be the tooth that will determine the stage. A cal of 1 to 2 millimeters will be stage 1, cal of 3 millimeters will be stage 2, and more than or equal to 5 will be stage 3 or 4. If for some reason cal was not given in the question, we then refer to the radiographic bone loss to reach our diagnosis. Otherwise, cal should always be our starting point. Now, it's uncommon for the radiographic bone loss to be brought up in an exam question, but if they do, percentage will undoubtedly be important for her staging. But what if the radiographic bone loss was not calculated? In that case, the probing depth in the chart could give us an estimation of the percentage. What I mean by this is, if the probing depth was 4 or less, the radiographic bone loss will most probably be less than 15%, indicating that less than 15% of the root length is exposed and this is stage 1. If it was 5, then it's between 15 and 33% and this is stage 2. As long as bone loss is less than 33%, we're still in the coronal third of the root. If 6 or more, then it's more than 33%, indicating bone loss has reached the middle third of the root or beyond and is stage 3 or 4. This will be a significant tool to use when it comes to determining the grade. This table here will help simplify your calculations and will be explained in detail in the next video. To understand more about grading, click on the link above. Now, going on to stage modifiers, one is tooth loss, which is pretty straightforward. If no teeth were lost due to periodontitis, and this is important to remember, then we're still within stage 1 or 2. 4 or less teeth lost is stage 3, more than 4, and it's stage 4. Moreover, teeth that are considered hopeless and are planned for extraction should be regarded as teeth lost as well. The other modifier is complexity. What complexity refers to here is how complex will the local treatment be, and if there are any medical comorbidities contributing to the complexity of the management, the more complex the management, the higher the stage. Let's break it down. If the probing depth was 4 millimeters or less, it's stage 1. If it was 5, it's stage 2. 
with only horizontal bone loss most of the time and not vertical bone loss. Nevertheless, once the pocket depth reaches 6 mm or more, it's either stage 3 or 4. How can we differentiate if it's a 3 or a 4? It's quite simple. If the case is too complicated to the point this patient will need a rehabilitation dream implant to function and masticate properly, it's stage 4. The distinction lies mainly within the complexity factors. If other than the pocket depth being 6 mm or more, the patient has only vertical bone loss of 3 mm or more, vertication involvement of class 2 or 3 according to HAMS classification, or moderate rich defects, then it's a class 3. If, in addition to one or more of these factors, we have masticatory dysfunction due to the loss, due to the tooth loss, for example, or secondary occlusal trauma causing a degree of two or more tooth mobility, and what they mean by secondary occlusal trauma here is after the teeth integrity were affected for whatever reason, causing periodontal bone loss, normal or excessive forces applied will cause injury, resulting in further tissue changes and bone loss. Furthermore, severe rich defects, bite collapse, drifting, and flaring of teeth will also shift the diagnosis to stage 4. Having less than 20 teeth remaining, which should comprise 10 opposing pairs, also results in a stage 4. So to summarize, if for example we have a case where there is 2 mm clinical attachment loss, probing depth is 3 and no teeth lost, then it, this is stage 1. If we have the same case, but for example the probing depth is 5, we will have to diagnose this as stage 2. Any single factor of these may shift the stage to a higher level. This is true for most cases except one, for instance, if the case was classified as stage 3 due to the presence of a vertical defect that is more than or equal to 3 mm or class 2 vertication involvement and those sites were successfully regenerated such that the cal throughout the dentition is now 3 to 4 mm, vertication involvement is a class 1 or not clinically detectable, and probing depths are less than or equal to 5 mm, the stage could change from stage 3 to stage 2. Now going down to the extent and distribution. The extent could be described as localized, generalized, or molar incisor pattern, which was previously known as aggressive periodontitis. Simply, if for example we have the entire set of teeth, which will come to a total of 28, excluding the third molars, and we have 6 teeth that have periodontitis, dividing 6 by 28, which is the number of teeth that have periodontitis, by the total number of teeth present, and multiplying the answer by 100 will result in 21%, which is less than 30%. Therefore, this will be localized periodontitis. 30% or more and it's generalized. Affecting only the first molars and the incisors, it's a molar incisor pattern. To make your life easier, just remember if out of the 28 teeth, 8 or less teeth are affected by periodontitis, it's going to be localized. More than 8 and it's generalized. Let's solve this example to paint a clearer image. Here we have a chart with teeth 17, 16, 15 and 14. First off, since the question says it's a representative sample, that means these four teeth represent the status of the entire dentition. This will be clarified shortly. Now, usually in exams, the chart will include the pocket depth only. Cal and radiographic bone loss may be mentioned in the question, and at that time we should utilize them to reach a diagnosis. But at many times we only rely on pocket depth. Looking at the pocket depth, we can see we have two sides that have a pocket depth of 5 that are bleeding and are non-adjacent teeth. So this will be periodontitis since we have pockets that are more than 3 mm, are bleeding, and are non-adjacent teeth. How about the stage? What do you think it's going to be? This case will be diagnosed as stage 2 since the pocket depth is 5 mm. Now to calculate the extent, total number of teeth here is 4. Two of them have periodontitis, so 2 divided by 4 multiplied by 100 is equal to 50%, which is more than 30%. Therefore, this is generalized periodontitis. So... The diagnosis here is going to be generalized periodontitis stage 2. What if in this same question they say the patient has lost 4 teeth? In that case, the diagnosis will shift from stage 2 to stage 3. Now, what if using the same example, the two teeth with the 5mm pockets were adjacent? For instance, the 17 and 16. In that case, it is still a periodontitis case because the question mentioned it is a representative sample. What I mean by this is all the second and first molars in the mouth will be affected and 17 is not adjacent to 27, so it's periodontitis. If the question did not state that the sample is representative, in this case this will not be periodontitis and the cause might be local like an overhang for example. 
Now, what if the recession and forecation were given? For example, in this case, if there was a recession of 2 on the 1.7 and recession of 3 on the 1.5 and forecation 2 on the 1.7. Here we should use this equation. Cal is equal to pocket depth plus recession, recession being the distance from the cement enamel junction to the free gingival margin. Then, based on the cal, we decide on the stage. Adding the pocket depth, which is 5 mm, to the recession, which is 2, will equal to 7, and cal on the 1.5 will be 8, so it's either stage 3 or 4. Percation 2 could also be stage 3 or 4, but since the case does not seem like the patient needs a complex rehabilitation, and we don't have any extra factors that might indicate this is stage 4, the diagnosis here will be stage 3. What if, in addition to forcation 2, we add mobility 2 on teeth 1.7 and 1.5? In this case, the diagnosis will shift to stage 4. What if, the question says, the free gingival margin is at the cement enamel junction? This indicates that the pocket depth is equal to the clinical attachment loss, and we can use cal or pocket depth to get to the stage as they're both equal. Another example is, if in the chart we have a huge pocket depth on all teeth, Eights, for example, and in the question they say the bone level is 1 to 2 millimeters from the cement enamel junction. This indicates that there is no bone lost, which means this is a gingival enlargement case due to drug, for example. It's a deep pocket, but due to the enlargement and not the clinical attachment loss, and this will not be diagnosed as periodontitis. So this will be it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to press on the link in the description below to learn how to grade. And please hit the subscribe button if you would like to get notifications of our upcoming videos. Thanks, guys, and take care. Bye-bye.